Scepter to Jesus is the scepter, is the throne. Alleluia is the triumph, is the victory alone. Hark the songs of peaceful Zion, thunder like a mighty flood. Jesus, out of every nation, has redeemed us by his blood. Alleluia, not as orphans are we left in sorrow now. Alleluia, he is near us, faith believes nor questions how. Though the cloud from sight received him when the forty days were o'er, shall our hearts forget his promise, I am with sing to Jesus, he is the scepter, he is the throne. Alleluia, he is the triumph, he is the victory alone. Hark the songs of peaceful Zion, thunder like a mighty Jesus, out of every nation, has redeemed us by his blood. Good morning, church. My name is Pastor Austin Wellhausen, otherwise known as just Pastor Austin. So great to be with you all in worship today. Whether you're a guest or a member here, we're just glad and thankful that God has called you to this time where uh, we set aside the start of our week to acknowledge God and his love for us and how by the power of his spirit we may go forward with his grace and with his love and bring that to the world around us. We're going to make our beginning this morning in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Worthy is the Lamb who is slain. Uh, to receive power and wealth and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and praise. Uh, then every creature in heaven and on earth and under the earth and on the sea and all that is in them, within them, saying, uh, to the one who sits on the throne and to the Lamb be praise and honor and glory and power forever and ever. Amen. Church, we're going to continue with our next song. Ship. 
Amen. What a great song that was. Church, would you please join me as uh, I say a word of prayer. Uh, Lord, our God, in the reading and proclamation of your word, uh, we pray you will illumine our minds and our hearts so that we may hear and understand your word, that we may know and live according to your word, and that we would become living letters of your word, equipped to follow Jesus in every part of our lives by the power of your Holy Spirit through Christ our Lord, the living word. Amen. Uh, church, we've been in the middle of this series called God's One Another People, where we've been talking about some features that make God's people uh, unique. The theme for this weekend is service. So we're going to read a few scripture passages talking about how God's one another people serve one another. Uh, this is from Galatians chapter 5, verses 13 through 15. This is written by the Apostle Paul to uh, the church in Galatia. And Paul says this, you, my brothers and sisters, were called to be free, but do not use your freedom to indulge the flesh, but rather serve one another humbly in love. For the entire law is fulfilled in keeping this one commandment, love your neighbor as yourself. If you bite and devour each other, watch out or you will be destroyed by each other. This is God's word. Our next reading comes from the Gospel of Mark, uh, from chapter 10, verses 42 through 45. Uh, Jesus called them, the disciples, together and said, You know that those who are regarded as rulers of the Gentiles lord it over them, and their high officials exercise authority over them. Not so with you. Instead, whoever wants to be great among you must be your servant. And whoever wants to be first must be slave of all. For even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. Amen. This is God's Word. We're going to continue with our children's message from our Family Life and Children's Ministry Director, Don Roop. Hey, friends. How are you doing today? Happy Saturday. It is actually chore Saturday in our house right now. Um, which I don't know about you guys, not my boy's favorite and honestly, not my favorite either, but that's okay. These things have to be done, but it fits into what we are talking about, um, with our children's message today. So that's why I am looking like this and interrupting chores to talk to you. Um, we're talking about love, which might not make sense in the light of what I just said either. Um, but our uh, verses today talk about Christ's love for us and our love for each other. And that's what we've been talking about is that we are one another people, that we are put here to care for each other and, and um, to love each other. And um, we want to be there for each other. So how do you say I love you? Um, sometimes it looks like a hug. I am so excited we get to hug people again, of course, still in a safe way. Um, but I am a hugger. I love that one of the things I miss the most during all of this was being able to hug people. Um, maybe you say, I love you, a card or a note. Um, maybe it looks something like this, a bouquet of pretty flowers. Oh, this poor little guy. Um, maybe it looks like this, where uh, they're pretty flowers. My boys love to give me flowers, um, which is so sweet of them. Um, but I'm going to suggest that, although those things are excellent ways to do that, um, Maybe there's something more, something that looks a little different, especially when we're talking about sharing Jesus' love with others. Um, our verses today talk about that, and it says that Jesus didn't come to, to be served by us, even though that's really what should happen. We should be serving him, um, and we do that uh, by doing something else. But he came to serve us and to give his life for us. So what does that mean in how we care for others, how we as Christians do things for other people? And um, there is a verse in Galatians, um, our other verse for today, that says that we should serve one another humbly and in love. And that means without expecting all kinds of thanks or gratitude or having to get something back for serving, because that's not necessarily what we want either. And um, our verse, sorry, I have it over here on my computer. It's... Um, talking about loving your neighbor as yourself. And we've heard that so many times. Love the way you want to be loved and cared for. And before that, it says the entire law, all that we are told to do, 
deals with loving each other. It's all about the best ways to love and care for each other and the how that honors God. So I'm going to suggest that this is a kind of bouquet that we can give that shows love. Let's see what we have in this bouquet. Hmm, this looks like a cooking spoon. So maybe love looks like helping your parents with dinner or making dinner for somebody who is sick or just had a baby or maybe you make enough that you can share with your neighbor who's a little bit older, something like that. Maybe love looks like this. Cards? Well, maybe it's your grandparents or that older neighbor who just is a little bit lonely and wants to spend time with someone and just have fun. Maybe it's your little brother or sister who always wants to play with you and you're usually too busy, but you make time. Maybe love looks like this. What is this? This is a glove for dishwashing and cleaning. So maybe it looks like what we're doing all together today and uh, maybe it's um, helping with chores. Here's another cleaning dishwashing thing. Maybe it's like this, a pencil. Maybe you can help somebody in your class who didn't quite get what was happening in class, but you got it and you can explain it and help them. Or maybe it's a younger brother or sister who is having a little bit of trouble with homework. Um, maybe it's writing a letter or a note, a thank you note, or just telling somebody that you're thinking about them and you care for them. Um, maybe it's telling them that you prayed for them. How cool is it to tell people that you brought them to God that day? Um, I love being able to say that to people, but we have to say it because we often say, I'll pray for you. But sometimes we actually forget to do that. We get busy with other things. So make sure when you tell somebody that you actually do it. Um, maybe it's helping somebody, whether it's with something around the house or, you know, making something, fixing something it could look like that. And this one is yard work. Maybe it's helping pull weeds or do the grass, or maybe you have a neighbor who has a hard time doing things like that. Um, so I think love and worship of Jesus, he tells us that we keep his commands when we love one another. Um, when we look like this, not just in church clothes, when we're all sweaty and we have been busy helping others, um, that's how Jesus loves to see us is giving ourselves to other people in his name without expecting anything in return. And what a gift it is that he allows us to do those things, to fill each other's needs and weaknesses. And that means, you know what, guys, there's somebody out there waiting to do that for you too when you need them. So don't forget that. You are a very important part of all of this, and there's always something you can do. So would you pray with me? Jesus, we are so thankful for all the gifts that you give us that um, we can bless others with. Help us to remember that you have filled our hands and our lives with good things that we get to share with other people, um, whether it's things that we know or things that we're able to do. But Lord, help us to see the people who need to know more about you and who need our service, Lord, who need our help with things. Help us to see those and and just answer those. Um, and we are so thankful that that is one of the greatest ways to show you and others that we care about them. In your name we pray. Amen. All right, friends, get out there and help somebody who needs it today. was blinded by my sin 
had no ears to hear your voice, did not know your love within, had no taste for heaven's joys. Then your Spirit gave me life, opened up your word to me through the God. Give me endless hope and peace. Help me. Good morning, church. Once again, my name is Pastor Austin. So great to have you all uh, with us all in worship this morning. As we mentioned before our readings, we're in the middle of this current series called God's One and Other People. We're talking about uh, just a few uh, characteristics that we find in scripture that tells us what makes God's people unique. Today, we're talking about uh, serving one another. Uh, before we begin, I want to share something that I don't know if all of you may be familiar with. It's a fact about myself, and that is that uh, I went to college at a small school a little north of Milwaukee called Concordia University, Wisconsin. And while I was in college for two years, I played uh, football there. I realize that's probably fairly obvious uh, because of my very large and in intimidating figure. I'm being sarcastic, but I did play football for two years there. And one of the years I played football in college, our coach gave the team an article to read. There's proof I played football. I'm on the far right, number 82 down there. Okay. Uh, one of the years I played football, as I was saying, our, our coach gave the team an article to read on leadership. Now, this was an interesting choice by our coach for two reasons. The first one is that my experience, uh, college football players don't spend a lot of time reading. It's not something they do. Uh, the second reason why this article was an interesting choice is because, again, this was an article on leadership given to a bunch of football players, and the article focused in on one key individual. So you'd think, okay, football, leadership, want to inspire these guys. What individual would that be? You probably think, okay, it's obviously going to be some kind of uh, football player, some athlete, maybe a president of some sort. The article focused in on Mother Teresa. She was, she was like the centerpiece of this article on leadership. And that's because the article defined leadership as leadership is influence. Okay, leadership is influence. And Mother Teresa, if you know really anything about her life, you could probably say, okay, Mother Teresa, her purpose in life, it was maybe never to be a, a, a great leader. I don't think she set out to be a great leader. I don't think she even set out to be a very influential. If you asked her when she was young, hey, do you want to be someone who's really influential? I, I, she probably would have said no. What Mother Teresa was, she was a great servant. That's what she wanted to be. She was a great servant. And because she was such a great servant, 
she became those other things. She became a leader and she became influential because of the way she served others. We all know people today who, even from a young age, they, they maybe want to be a great leader. They have charisma, they have some of those characteristics, and they say, I want to grow up, I want to lead people. We maybe know others that they, they want to influence people. Uh, actually, I don't know if you know this, but today there's, there's uh, people want to grow up to be influencers. I'm finding this out, and basically they want to have, you know, YouTube or social media channels, and literally they want to be influencers and get paid to do that. Now, there are some people that God calls to be great leaders. God calls other people to have a lot of influence. But here's the thing. God calls all of us. God calls his people to be servants. That's what we're all called to be. And again, in the middle of this, you know, series, God's one another people talking about uh, serving others and service and what that's all about. That's a word the Bible uses a lot. So I think for starters, it's probably good to get some kind of definition down. Okay, how does scripture use that word? And what's that really all about? There's a word in the New Testament, uh, oftentimes, which is translated as serving or servant, and that is uh, diakoneo. Okay, diakoneo, you can see it right there. And this word, like a lot of Greek words, it means a lot of things all at once. It can mean uh, to serve others, to minister to them, to take care of somebody, uh, to do some kind of act for them. I guess to sum it all up, it's a very broad word. And we can just say serving broadly means to do something that benefits someone else on behalf of God. Okay, just Good morning, St. Matthew. We are just going to try to get Pastor Austin here, back here in just a second in the chat. I want to, I'm going to open up the chat here a second, and I just want proof uh, that you guys can still hear me out there. So if you could get in the chat, go ahead and, uh, and say something here. Let's see, we've got somebody raising their hand. Yes, good. All right. See, church, this is where you come together, uh, one another to serve, uh, to serve me, I appreciate that. I think I'm going to go ahead and get Pastor Austin to kind of come on in here and uh, come in front of uh, my computer and we'll get him to finish up his message. So hang on just a second here. So I will say, yes, uh, this is a morning full of technical difficulties, but God is carrying us through anyway. So we are going to go ahead and I'm going to go ahead and uh, give this back to Pastor Austin. You won't be able to see any of his slides uh, for the moment, but uh, we'll go ahead and get him back in here. Thank you, sir. <laughs> All right, the old switcheroo. Uh, I would love to tell everybody that I left to grab donuts, but uh, nevertheless, there are no donuts. And yep, some technical stuff, but that's okay. God works through it all. So yeah, uh, service just means to do something for someone else on behalf of God. And very broad, but uh, we're going to spend the rest of this time talking about uh, kind of a few characteristics in scripture that we see about, about serving others, okay? Uh, I have three points today, okay, and that's all on service. So scripture says serving others, it's freeing, it frees us. Service is humble, there's like a humble nature about it. And then lastly, service is unconditional, okay? So first, service is freeing. Second, service is humble. And lastly, service is unconditional. We're just going to pack some of these things today, okay? So first, service is freeing, it frees us. Now, you may remember from our, our reading in Galatians, uh, Paul tells us right away, you, my brothers and sisters, were called to be free. Now, when we hear that word free, we like that word today. Okay, that is a very, very good word in us for what we understand it. So the way we understand freedom a lot today is we understand freedom as meaning we are free from something. Okay, we remember our history classes and we were taught that our, our country was started because our founding fathers, they uh, you know, they thought they were, you know, oppressed and they were under some unjust laws. So they wanted to be free from all this. And that's how we got started. 
Now, freedom in scripture, it means something uh, kind of different than what we would commonly understand it today. Now, there is this sense that the Bible teaches us where to be free means that we are free from something. Okay, that is true. We are free from sin. And maybe you're someone that's grown up in the church your entire life. And you, even from the moment uh, you were a baby, before you could even process those words and knew what those meant, you were told you are free from sin. Don't please, like, don't ever get tired of hearing that. I mean, you could spend 10 years in the church, you could spend 80 years. Do not ever get tired of hearing someone say you are free from sin on account of Jesus. Romans 6, chapter 23 says the wages of sin is death. There's going to come a point in time where God is going to look everybody in the eye and tell them, I made this beautiful world. I put people around you that were made in my image. Do you see what your sin did to them? Do you see how much your sin messed it all up? Because of Jesus... God can say, I look at you, and because of my son, you're free from that. You are free from the consequences of sin and death. So we are free from sin. That's one side of the coin. But when scripture talks about freedom, there is the, kind of this other side of the coin too. And that means we are free for, right? God frees us for a purpose. He frees us from our sin. So we are free to do his will. And that will, in short, is to serve the people that God has placed around us. It's kind of like this. I, I don't know if any of you all are familiar with uh, the movie Saving Private Ryan, Okay. And here's my real thumb about movies, by the way, if it's been over 20 years old, uh, I don't feel guilty spoiling it because it's your fault for not seeing it. But anyway, uh, Saving Private Ryan, it's a fictional story. It's based on World War II. And basically, there's this uh, soldier, uh, this guy whose name is Private James Ryan, and he's got three brothers. And during the war, his three brothers have all died and passed away. So the U.S. military gets together and, and they decide that we cannot write another letter to this mother telling her her last son has passed away. So they get this small unit of soldiers and their mission is to go and find this Private Ryan and to bring him back home. As these soldiers, this private unit, as they travel across Europe, they eventually find uh, this Private Ryan. And they said, hey, we got good news and bad news. Uh, bad news is your brothers have died in the war. And Private Ryan says, which ones? They say all of them. But they say the good news is you're free. You're going home. And for those of you who've seen the movie, you know what happens next. It's a very powerful moment. Private Ryan, uh, instead of using his freedom to go home, he chooses to use his freedom to stay and to serve his men and fight with them. And that's just how God calls us to use our freedom. Now that we are free from sin, we're released from that. God frees us for, for service, for caring for the people God has placed around us. So service is free. Uh, next, service is humble, okay? There's a humility about it. Now, we read in our reading from Mark where Jesus is telling his disciples, and he's, he's telling them to look at the Gentiles or, or just non-Jewish people, and we can look at this thing and just say, you know, maybe, you know, non-believers or whatnot. He says people oftentimes, if they have authority, you know, they kind of boss people around. They like people to know they're in charge. There's not really a lot of humility to it, but he says, instead, if you follow me, be like me, and I Though Jesus is an authority over his disciples, and he was, he still chose to serve them. He chose to care for them. And that's a lot how we're supposed to think about service today. It, it, it's very humble, right? And people get a little confused with that word humble. Maybe we think it means something like, you know, we got to be really hard on ourselves and, and super self-critical. That's not the case. The Bible says over and over again, we need to be humble, right? But it also says that we need to be confident. We can be confident in the gifts and the skills that God has given us right? Because God's working through us. God goes with us. We can be both humble and confident. Those two things go together. So what does humility mean? What is humility really all about? Uh, this famous, uh, well-known Christian uh, scholar and author, he wrote a lot in the 1900s, uh, C.S. Lewis. He's the guy that wrote The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. He once said about humility, I love this quote, he said, humility is not thinking less of yourself. Or excuse me, humility is not, yeah, it's not thinking less of yourself. It's thinking of yourself less. I love that quote. Humility is not thinking less of yourself. You don't have to tear yourself down, but what it is, it's thinking of yourself less, right? Thinking of others more, thinking of yourself less. That's really what true humility is all about. Uh, this is a true story about a woman who came to faith in New York City. There, uh, there's a woman and she spent her entire life at her job and working hard. That was her purpose in life, was her job and, and being promoted. She had climbed the ladder at her company. She was in a position that not a lot of women were in where she worked. And all of a sudden she was assigned this really big project and she completely messed it up. She, it, it was all her fault too. She knew it. So she went and she told her boss about what happened and she expected to get fired. She had seen people fired 
uh, throughout her career for doing things a lot less than what she did. So her boss later comes back to her and he tells her, I went to the board of the company and uh, I took the fall. I told him it was, it was my fault. You're off the hook. And her boss was not fired. He was reprimanded. And it obviously looked very bad for him, but this lady was off the hook. And, and, and she said, why, why did you do that? I, I've lived in Manhattan my entire life and I've never seen anybody do what you just did. So this man, her boss goes, you know, I'm, I'm a Christian. And I just felt like at that moment, that was the right thing to do. And because of that experience, this woman started going to this man's church and uh, she later became a believer. And, you know, I share that story. And that's a true story. I heard that from a pastor who serves in New York, actually at his church that that happened. And, you know, we, uh, we can't all do that, right? That's not something we can all do. That's, that is an extreme example. I get that, but we can all think a little more about how do we serve the people around us? How do we humble ourselves? How do we think less of ourselves and think about others more? Maybe your phone is like mine. And every week I get a notification about how much time I spent looking at my screen. And, you know, I always feel a little guilty about that. Like, oh, that's terrible. It's not good for me. All that waste of time. Can you imagine if our phones gave us updates about how much time we spent during the week thinking about ourselves as opposed to thinking about others? Can you imagine like the guilt that we would get from, from that experience? But service means that we lay ourselves down and we think about the people that God has placed around us. Whether you're the head of the company, whether you're the entry level position, how do you serve these people? Look around you. How do you serve the people God has placed around you? Okay, so first point, service is free. Uh, second, it's humble. And last point, service is unconditional. Now for this last point, I don't have a, a story or analogy. We just get Jesus here, but that's a good thing. Romans chapter five, starting at verse six, it says this. Uh, you see, at just the right time, when we were still powerless, Christ died for the ungodly. And very rarely will anyone die for a righteous person, uh, though for a good person, someone might possibly dare to die. But God demonstrates his love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. That last verse, that's such a fundamental truth. While we were still sinners, Christ Jesus died for us. The greatest thing anybody could ever have is a relationship with the one true God. And that's what we have. But the only reason we have that is because Jesus unconditionally chose to serve his enemies, sinners. That was us at one point in time. He chose to serve us. Lastly, from Matthew chapter 5, verses 43 uh, through 48. Jesus tells us, you have heard that it was said, love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I tell you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. If you love those who love you, what reward will you get? Or not even the tax collectors doing that. And if you only greet your own people, uh, what are you doing any different than others? Don't even the pagans do that. Uh, be perfect, therefore, as your heavenly father is perfect. When it comes to serving others, uh, we don't have a choice. There's going to be times in our life when God places people around us who look like us, who act like us, who believe the same things we do. Do we serve those people? Yeah, we do. Will there be other times God puts people around us who uh, don't act like us? Maybe believe different things. Don't look like us. Do we serve those people? Yeah, we do. Because that's exactly what Jesus did. Jesus service, he knew no boundaries. He served all people. That does not mean that he accepted what everybody did or he believed everything they believed, but he chose to still serve all people. And that includes us. At one time we were his enemies and he chose to lay that down and serve us in the most dramatic way. So friends, let's set our eyes on Jesus. He is our servant. He served us first. And with him, with the Holy Spirit he gives us, he empowers us to serve those people God has placed around us. Amen. Amen. All right, church, we're going to continue with a time of confession. And I realize the words won't come up on the screen. So I ask that you follow me and I'll lead us along through this. We confess uh, together. Holy God, as we groan at our weaknesses, we ask for your forgiveness. Your word is clear and your grace is so good but we close our ears to your call. And with our perverse pride, we follow the gifts that you have given us. And like your servant, Paul, we know what is required of us, yet, like Paul, we, we, do, uh, the good, we do not do the good we want to do, but the evil thing that we don't want to do is actually what we end up doing. God, we mistreat uh, those we love, and we dishonor you, the one who made us. We confess how long, O oh Lord, Will we continue to ignore your will? 
This is the good news. God continues to provide streams of living mercy. And he invites us all again and again to live renewed lives. We turn once again to the cross, to the empty cross, uh, to the stone rolled away, to our interceding Lord Jesus Christ, who is seated at God's right hand, to the gracious gift of his Holy Spirit. Uh, together we seek our forgiveness through Jesus Christ, our Savior. We draw upon his promises and we ask once again simply for mercy. With his Holy God, with your Holy Spirit, would you please sanctify us? God, hear our prayer, O oh Lord, for we ask it in Christ's name. Friends, it is my joy today, although uh, right now I cannot see you face to face. I know you are there. I know God is with you. I know God longs for you uh, to lay down ourselves, to confess our sins, to be restored and renewed by the love of Christ, by the Holy Spirit. It is my joy as your pastor to proclaim to you the forgiveness of all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. We continue after receiving the good forgiveness and mercy of our God. It's the greatest thing we could ever receive. We continue with our prayers of the church. Would you all please pray with me? Uh, Lord, as your word has just taught us, uh, we are called to serve. We are called to be a serving people. God, this is only possible because of the way that you have first served us. We, who at one time were your enemies because of our sin, you have forgiven that, and you now have freed us from sin, from the consequences of sin. Uh, but Lord, you free us for service. You free us to serve the people you've placed around us. Help us to be humble and help us to unconditionally serve the people that you have placed in the midst of our lives. God, we uh, ask that, uh, first of all, God, as we are in this point in time, um, in our ministry where in our in-person worship, we are slowly working back to a uh, closer sense of normal. We uh, thank you for guiding us to this point. Lord, we ask that you continue uh, to protect our ministry and our staff and our worshipers from COVID-19. We ask that you would guide us as we continue to transition to post-COVID worship. Uh, guide us, Lord, as we try to fill some vacant staff positions at both of our campuses. Lead us to the people that you've already chosen are going to serve us in our next chapter of ministry. And lastly, Lord, we pray every week for persecuted Christians around the world. God, wherever the persecuted church is, strengthen them, uh, give them your spirit, God, because by uh, the persecutions, the sufferings, and even, uh, unfortunately, Lord, some of their deaths, you still work through that in powerful ways to grow your church. We pray especially this week for persecuted Christians in Afghanistan. And God, we pray for those who are sick or hospitalized. We pray for Braden Breeding, Randy Tyler, for Zoe, and for all those who are uh, still suffering from COVID. Be with the doctors, technicians, the nurses who are working with all these people. Lord, keep them safe and protected and uh, let us show them how thankful we are for the gifts you have given them. Lord, uh, for grief, we, we pray for the family and friends of Karen uh, Tubin's father. Lord, be with this family. Help them during this process. Comfort them in any way you can. And as always, we pray that you would give them good Christian friends and family to support them and let them know uh, of your love and your grace and your mercy during this difficult time. For the homebound, Lord, we pray, especially this week for uh, Darlene Tubert. Uh, be with Darlene, Lord, in any way there can. We know things are, are getting better, but there's still some restrictions in, in some places that any way you can, Lord, a personal touch uh, for her that she would know we are praying for her and that she is loved where she is right now. And Lord, during the midst of this year, uh, it, it's been difficult, it's been hard, but we are still reminded that you still work and there are things to be thankful for on this earth. We uh, give you thanks, especially for the 31st wedding anniversary of Brian and Colleen McKenna. We got for, uh, for the McKennas, we celebrate with them for all marriages, for new births and birthdays and everything we have to celebrate, God. We, we thank you for all this, for uh, new baptisms around the world. Lord, remind us that you are still working through this world and there are things we can celebrate in the work that you are doing right now. And lastly, Lord, we pray for our governments, our country, and, and the world. We pray for our, our state governing officials. And Lord, we pray for those families and, and people who have been affected by the Florida condo collapse that took place this past week. Lord, wherever you are, wherever your people are, allow them to um, be your hands and your feet, that they can guide people to your love and grace and the hope of eternal life. We pray all these things in your name. Amen. Amen. Church, we are now going to continue with our Lord's Prayer. And although these words will not come up on the screen, I trust that you know uh, these words. Would you all please pray with me? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed it be thy name. Thy kingdom come, 
thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Okay, church, I'm going to go ahead and uh, dismiss this with a blessing. I think after that, Mr. Cinder is going to come in here and uh, step in and maybe give us some other instructions. We'll see how things are going. But uh, in the midst of technical uh, difficulties, the good news is God's word still spreads. God's word is still working through it. So we give our thanks to him. We go with his blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give to you his peace. Have a great week, everybody. Serve the Lord. I just love this time where we can come together as the body of Christ using our various gifts and talents to serve one another, but also to serve those that God has called us to serve. So uh, why don't we just uh, just kind of close out with a, with a hymn uh, where we will just celebrate the power that God gives his people to, to, serve, uh, to serve others. And then I'm going to ask Pastor Austin to come on back here uh, for... Uh, for uh, our closing announcements. So hang on here a second. Oh, this is a fun morning, but I'm glad I get to share it with all of you. And God of glory, on your people pour your power. Crown your ancient church's story, bring its bud to glorious flower. Grant us wisdom, grant us courage for the facing of this hour. For the facing of this hour. Cure children's warring madness bend our pride to your control shame our want and selfish gladness rich in things and poor in soul grant us wisdom grant us courage lest we miss your kingdom's goal lest we miss your kingdom's goal us from weak resignation to the evils we deplore. Let the gift of your salvation be our glory evermore. Grant us wisdom, grant us courage, serving you whom we adore, serving you Right now we have Pastor Austin back here uh, to share with us some announcements. Oh, sir. I, Thomas called me back in here. I'm never going to get these donuts. Okay. That's all right. I probably don't need them. All right. All right, church. Yes, as uh, Thomas said, we just have a few announcements for today. If you're a guest and you're with us in worship, we thank you for being here. If you want to learn more about St. Matthew or see how we can help guide you along with your journey with Jesus, uh, please feel free to contact us at hello at st-matthew.org. That's an email you can reach out to, and we'd love to help you with anything we can. Uh, our, just a reminder, we're continuing our current uh, Bible study series, which is at 1045. This is Zoom Bible study. You can find the link for that on your e-news or just on our website. We look forward to doing that in just a little bit here, okay? Uh, special announcement, there will be a special congregation little assembly Zoom meeting today at 1 p.m. We're going to uh, talk about the non-call teacher proposal, and this includes some changes to the Constitution and bylaws. I think today is the meeting where we're voting on this, correct? I believe so. Yeah, so we're going to vote to make this official. We've already discussed this before, so the link for this meeting is, again, on your e-news, or you can also find it on our website. As always, church, we thank you for your continued financial support throughout this year. Just a reminder that you can always uh, give online, giving back to God what he has first given to us, 
you can find uh, give online at st slash matthew.org slash give to set up recurring giving or even with one time gifts. Uh, today was a big day for us, as we kind of mentioned earlier in our worship services. Uh, all COVID restrictions have been lifted in our worship settings with these exceptions. We're uh, going to continue to distribute communion as we have been throughout COVID. So it'll be kind of the individual communion in little baggies at uh, Blended. That'll be at the third Sunday of every month at the other worship venues at Wixom and at Prayer and Praise. That'll be the second Sunday of the month. And we're going to be uh, continuing the monthly drive-through communion. I, I believe until, is that into October? Through we have October. That? Yeah, through October, we'll be continuing that, which that has been, uh, we always, the helpers, we always say this as we do that. That has always been a huge blessing for us and we enjoy doing that. So uh, that'll be the first Wednesday in July. We'll be ready to go ahead and have that drive-through communion service ready to go, okay? Uh, but, but as always, as we kind of continue to work through these decisions to try to uh, get back to normal and kind of weighing out everything that's going on right now, we thank you for your prayers, patience, and love as we uh, continue to work through this process and then communicate it back to you. That's all the answers I have. We'll just enjoy a little chat time on Zoom and Facebook for a little bit. Church, have a great day. Have a good week in the Lord. Hope God bless you during this time in worship. Church, this was a lot of fun, but uh, like all good things, it must come to an end for now. So have a wonderful week. And yes, we will see you on chat.
Thank you.